the Forty or Tea podcast. Gaslighting, which I think is a is a term that perhaps many people will um, recognize or at least know know a certain amount <laughs> about. Um, so I guess like there, there are particularly two types of of gaslighting that that spring to mind, um, in unintentional and intentional gaslighting. So I, I'd really want to understand like what do those two types of, of things look like in in different in real life in different situations? It's a very good question. So for me, I've been talking about gaslighting for like a decade now. So I like to think I was talking about it before it became cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but, yeah. um, gaslighting is a very, very difficult topic to talk about because it is very complicated. And I think there's many different types, but the two that I know most is unintentional and intentional. So generally, gaslighting is when someone manipulates us using psychological means into making us doubt our own sanity, live to reality, experiences or self and our memory too. And we can people can gaslight us in numerous ways, like they can gaslight us intentionally with an intention to cause harm and gain control over us or it can be unintentional where the intention and this is where it gets complicated the intention is sometimes to actually help us in particularly Mm. if we are autistic yeah yeah and if we are autistic we can be gaslighted by anyone you know it can be our our family, our friends, bosses, peers, teachers or doctors. And often it comes about because people just don't know how to help us because autism is so misunderstood. And it's an invisible disability a lot of the time. You can't see those hardships that we have. And there's always this ableist sort of perfection obsessed society that's like everyone needs to act a certain way to be good. And there's all of these things. So people try to help us by making us change our perceptions of ourselves and our reality to mould us into what they think would help us. And it doesn't always work because it doesn't help us because they don't understand what will help us and they don't understand our hardships enough to know that these things really cannot (laughs) help Mm. us. Mm. Mm. (laughs) So the like, as you said, sort of the, the intentional one is kind of it's used as a way to kind of manipulate people into um, feeling a certain way about certain things or feeling about feeling a certain way about themselves or their partner. Yeah. Um, I've, I've experienced um, intentional gaslighting before, um, which is, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of a tricky one because I think when we think of any kind of social, emotional, um thing we we kind of like to think about it in in sort of like the moment or the the time at which it happens whereas a lot of the time these types of things tend to be very very like background and kind of just now and again and they just kind of like it's not processed yeah it's not it's not like you can say oh right you're gaslighting me now me yeah. now it's like it seems to be like a like a, a growing thing that just um, you don't really pick up on at, at the time, but when you look back on things, it's it's a lot more apparent. I think that's what makes us so vulnerable to it as well, because if we do, as autistic people, if we do pr- struggle to process information and make connections like that, it does mean that what could be really obvious to other people is just not that apparent to us. Like I could, yeah. I could feel the rain on my skin and not process that it's raining. Like, I can't, sometimes I can't even process what my own name is if I'm really shut down. So if someone's treating me badly and they're taking advantage of me, like I, you know, for instance, if someone was to like move, like move my keys and then I, I'd be like, I know I left them on the table, but the person moved the keys and they're like, no, you definitely didn't leave it on the table. (laughs) Or they take money out of your purse and be like, no, you never had that money to begin with you're 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 not right in the head sort of thing and it's not yeah. it's not right it's not it's it's not nice but it does it makes you doubt every every little fiber of your own self-belief and then it just snowballs into you just not really understanding or knowing 
or trusting any part of your own judgment until you're just... <laughs> yeah, I don't know how to explain it. But that processing well, um, is a big part of it. Because I, I think, you know, that that kind of intentional gaslighting is something that people can um, perhaps, like, un understand to a certain extent. But I think one, one area that I've, I believe is, you know... It's a, it's a little bit harder to like for me to wrap my head head around is like the unintentional aspect of it, like, um, how does how does that happen? Like, in what kind of context would that would that be a thing? <laughs> so, like for autistic people in general, like what I was saying to do with like trying to help us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um. So, for example, people have or society has an idea of how autistic people should behave. And they think that it will help us. So they think we should maybe stop stimming, you know. And they might say, stop stimming. And stop stimming in itself is not unintentional gaslighting. But if you add on the psychological manipulation, which is stop stimming, there's no reason why you need to stim. It does not yeah. help you. And, you know, you can control it if you tried. That's the unintentional gaslighting. That's the psychological manipulation because it's like, I mean, it does help me. That's why I'm doing yeah. it. It's not easy to control. That's why I'm doing it. Because believe yeah. me, I'd be masking it if I could. <laughs> and it does help me. And, you know, those judgments, you know, based on what society thinks would help us and also make us maybe easier to deal with to other people. So it's, so it's kind of like neglecting someone's, like, lived experience and perceptions just because you don't believe that that is something that people can yeah yeah that, that that is right like yes maybe if it's because our lived reality is so different like for other people like a hug might not burn them and they'd be like well, why are you having such why why not just hug them why not just shake their hands yeah. You know, and they might guess. It's not a big issue. It's not a big yes. issue to them because they've never experienced it. They could never perceive mm. a reality different to their own. And because they've been sort of taught by society what helps autistic people, which is generally making us mask our autism, pretend that we're not autistic, mm. which of course doesn't help us in any way. <laughs> um, mm. They could use the psychological manipulation, the part of the gaslighting, which would be like, there's no reason why you don't hug people that, this feeling you have isn't real. There's, you know, it's impossible to feel it, that sort of thing. Yeah. And like, I used to get gaslighted unintentionally by like doctors and teachers for my shutdowns. Mm. And just as a background, <laughs> my shutdowns, I can lose the ability to walk and talk. And like I said earlier, sometimes I just, Same. I don't even, I can't even access my own name. Like I, I'm yeah. so yeah. shut down. I am not the person I used to be. And when this would happen at school, it would be just, I'd be totally unable to do anything. But the doctors would be like, well, it's all in your head. <laughs> it's yeah. all easily within your control if you wanted to change it. And it's yeah. an overreaction like that is impossible. So basically the fault is then with me for, for something that I cannot control and yeah, it's well, that because, just seems really it's because weird the lived because... reality is just so different. They could never perceive it to be real. And they selective teach us that is to like make a... us be less autistic, almost. Selective mutism definitely is a, a thing, and it yeah. happens. Like, Absolutely. For me, most of the time when I have a shutdown, I think that's, that's a really difficult part because I think some people, you know, as you said, they don't really get it. And at the same time, like, I think some people can have like personal like re reactions to like if if they've contributed towards you having a shutdown and you're not speaking to them and you're not replying to them they, they can they can be like an air of like anno uh, being annoyed at you they can take not it being personally able to, taking it personally exactly mm. yeah yeah but the thing i like to sort of remember is that it is ga unintentional gaslighting is an intention to help so there is no shame when people unintentionally mm. gaslight us because they are trying to help they just don't know how to and it's not really like you know parents and teachers will 
probably say this stuff to their children and their students all the time, you know, stop stimming, make eye contact, you know, with all the psychological manipulation that make people change their reality to actually do what they think would help them. And, but it's not their fault that they, sorry, that's not a word. <laughs> it's not their fault that they were taught by society of what a toxic way of what would actually help us. Mm. And I think as long as everyone is challenging themselves and in a healthy way, not invalidating, you know, their feelings is, it's okay that we can all sort of keep growing together because it is a learning journey. Sure. Sure. 